السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters Backbiting is prohibited Obviously gossip and slander is prohibited Now if someone backbites about you And someone slanders you Someone actually uh, fabricates something about you And spreads falsehood about you you need to know that that happened to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was the most loved unto Allah. So if Allah has chosen you to go through a little bit of the pain that he went through, then you need to know that it is a sign of acceptance for as long as you leave it in the hands of Allah. They won't be able to harm you. They really won't be able to do anything negative to you. Now, it is hurtful, it is painful, we are just human beings, but the reward of it is such that that person who has spread these tales will actually have to give you a lot of their good deeds. And if they don't have good deeds, then they will be taking your sins onto their shoulders. So it's not worth backbiting about others and it's not worth gossiping, slandering others. Remember, if it happens to us, I've spoken to you. There is hope. There is hope that Allah will give us in return a lot of goodness. You know, people can burn regarding what Allah has given you. Allah will give you even more. If only you are steadfast and you continue being humble and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if I want to clear my name and I want to mention someone who has done wrong to me, someone who has oppressed me, someone who has actually stolen something from me. Imagine you go to report a thief and you arrive there and you say, you know, someone came and did something. But I can't say anything because if I mention their name, it will be backbiting. And if I tell you what they did, then they wouldn't like it if I, if they were present here, so it's called backbiting. No, no, that's a misunderstanding. Yes, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, "Vikruka akhaka bima yakra." Riba or backbiting is to mention your brother in his absence with something he wouldn't like if he heard it or if he were there. So, when it comes to someone who is wronged, then there is no backbiting regarding speaking about the wrong that happened to you with the name of the person. For as long as you are the first party, the second party, that's it. It happened between two people and the one who was wronged is speaking. It's not like you heard what happened to so-and-so. No, I don't need to hear what happened to so-and-so. But so-and-so says, do you know what happened to me? Then that's not backbiting because you're mentioning something in order either to report it, to let others know, in order that they may save themselves from, this, from similar harm. So if someone stole something from you or you did a very, very, uh, you know, you did a big business deal and it went wrong because of the usurping of your wealth by another person, you may want to clarify to others that be careful of doing business with this person because they're not so upright because of what happened to me. And you can give them every detail and that's not backbiting. The same would apply if someone is getting married and they ask you about your ex-spouse. If it is just differences, that you may have had, uh, you can say, look, she was a good person or he was a good person, but we were very incompatible, two totally different people. Perhaps Allah may give you goodness with him or with her. Subhanallah. Very few people would do that. The companions used to do that. May peace be upon them. So, however, if it was something more detailed and you know that this person is a drug addict, it's very important to mention this. Don't deceive people, especially when they've asked you. Because if someone asks you, please, can you tell me about your ex husband? Why did you guys break up? And if you just mention, look, I don't like to talk about it. He was a reasonable person, but he had a problem with substance abuse. That's it. We said nothing more. Is it backbiting? No, because it happened to you and someone is asking you about something in order to save them from that harm. Imagine getting married to someone and you knew all along that this person was, for example, uh, involved in something really nasty. It was so simple for you to tell us if we asked you. If we didn't ask you, 
you're not obliged to let them know. You might look like a fool because they might want that person even with the weakness. Well, once you've told them what it is after they've asked you, it's up to them to make their minds up. Now, this is a beautiful verse at the beginning of the sixth juz or the sixth part of the Quran, also in Surah Ala Imran, where Allah says, لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم وكان الله سميعا عليما. Allah does not like that you openly say bad things about someone or bad speech unless you have been wronged yourself. And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. So that is the exception. The exception when it comes to backbiting. Something amazing. I think it's important for us to know this because a lot of people uh, don't say things that they are supposed to say, especially when it comes to business reference or marriage reference. You know, this is something Allah has taught us. We move on to another beautiful, beautiful verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is the next surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse number two that you should not cooperate with each other to fulfill something wrong or sinful, to fulfill something that is harmful or filled with enmity. When someone calls you towards enmity of another person who's innocent, Allah says, don't help them to achieve something that's wrong. We should never be helping people to achieve something wrong. And similarly, we should only be assisting each other to achieve something that is rewarding, something that is righteous and good correct and upright. So Allah says, Cooperate with one another, help one another when it comes to righteousness and God consciousness and do not help one another when it comes to sin and enmity. Now, how does this verse bring about hope to me? Brings about hope to me because if people are planning and plotting my downfall wrongly, by right, everyone is my, supposed to be my brothers and sisters. So they're not supposed to be helping someone achieve my downfall when I'm an innocent party. Subhanallah. When someone comes to you with a tale of someone else, you're supposed to be verifying. I would expect that you verified this. And if you couldn't verify it, consider me innocent. If you are prepared to do that, there is hope not just for me, but for you too. Because when tales come to me about you, I will do the same thing. Number one is you discount the tale when it's irrelevant and not involving you. I've got nothing to do with this tale. Please don't bring it to me. That's number one. Number two is if I do have something to do with it, the question here is, is it true? Do I just consider someone guilty by mere accusation? The answer is, Islam teaches us that a person is innocent until proven guilty without doubt. So it's easy to accuse people. The Prophet ﷺ says, لو يعطى الناس بدعواهم, You know, a beautiful hadith. If people were given uh, their accusations, if people were given dues based on accusation, then men would come up and accuse others of murder in order to get them killed. Subhanallah. But the Prophet ﷺ says clearly that the person needs to bring concrete evidence or if they don't have that evidence, the concrete evidence, then the accused person needs to swear an oath by Allah that they're innocent. And in that case, they're considered innocent and the topic is closed. So unfortunately today, by mere accusation, people are considered guilty until proven innocent. Look how the tables have turned. If someone wants to destroy your life, all they need to do is make an accusation. And is that accusation through the legal channels, through anything that is considered legitimate, acceptable? The answer is no. Well, in that particular case, you and I are taught to discount that. It may be true, but it hasn't come through the proper channels. So I have to give my sister the benefit of the doubt to consider her innocent before any evidence has come up that is concrete, studied by credible people who are appointed for that. So if you have, for example, social media that decides that, for example, a sister, a certain sister 
is an adulteress, for example. You cannot just believe social media, no matter how loud it sounds, because there will be a lot of people uh, who perhaps might say things just because of their frustrations. You will also one day be given the respite. You will also one day be given your right of being considered innocent until proven guilty if you consider others innocent until proven guilty. Remember that. So this is the law of Allah. This is the way Allah works. You cannot just uh, say things and do things as you wish. And you cannot just hold innocent people guilty based on mere accusation that has not even come from a credible source. When I say credible source, let's remember, accusations are serious, but equally serious, in fact, more serious are accusations that are false. And the issue of false accusation is there from the time of the Prophet ﷺ and before. If we had social media at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, one wonders what would have happened to Aisha radiallahu anha when they accused her of adultery. One wonders what would have happened. At that time, there were a few people spreading the tales. Allah says, just by spreading that which was not completed through a justice system, you are already guilty. And Allah says, you will be served the punishment by Allah. So you don't get away when you accuse someone. That is something very serious because we have to strike a balance between helping a victim who is really a victim and trying to get justice for them through the proper legal channels. Or, on the other hand, we also have to protect those who are being falsely accused. These two are rights that we owe everyone and everyone owes us as well. If I'm a victim, I would like justice. And I want people to help me. But at the same time, if I'm being accused falsely, I also need people to help me. So where do we draw the line? We are believers. We need to know. Concrete evidence has to be brought forward properly by those who are making the accusation. And if that's not going to happen, then uh, the, the person who is accused would actually have to Present, uh, take an oath by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clarify their name and they would be considered innocent. May Allah protect all of us. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.